Okay, so now that we've done the lab, let's take a look at the results of the lab, which is going to lead us to our first couple of equations. So the graph that you made, you had force on the y-axis, the displacement, how much the spring stretched on the x-axis. Gave you a nice straight line, took the slope. That slope is newtons per, per meter, which we use letter K for. And what that K represents is the spring constant. So that slope represents this thing called the spring constant. Now, the spring constant is a number which allows you to figure out how flimsy or how rigid the spring is. The higher the number, the more rigid the spring is. So if you take a look at the spring that's in your car and your shock absorbers, that has a really high K value in terms of the spring constant. The spring that you used in class, that has a very low spring constant because it was really flimsy, easy to move. So we have our first equation when we talk about the force exerted. So if we want to know how much force is needed to stretch or compress the spring, we would use the spring constant times however much we displace it from rest. X, the displacement, needs to be in meters. The spring constant is in newtons per meter. And force we know is in newtons. So we get our first equation that gives us a force equation. So that K represents this thing called the spring constant. So it tells us how tight the spring is or how hard it is to stretch or compress it. The units are newtons per meter. But now let's take a look at what the area underneath represents. Because we know in this class, whenever we make a graph, the slope tells us something, the area tells us something. So we know the slope tells us the spring constant. So what does the area underneath tell us? It tells us the energy. So now the question is, is what kind of energy are we talking about? Well, since it's a spring, we should know that that's elastic energy. So I see a triangle here. So that triangle is one half base times height. So the elastic energy is one half the base times the height. So the height is F, the base is X. So one half F times X. But from our other equation, our force equation, we can substitute in K times X for F. So then that leaves us 1 half k x times x. Well, what's an easier way to say x times x? x squared. So now we have our first energy equation. The energy equation is the elastic energy equation. So 1 half the spring constant k times however much we displace it squared. Only the displacement is squared. So 1 half k times x squared. Now you got to be careful because this, this looks similar to our force equation. So you got to know, are they talking about the force or are they talking about the energy? So we have an energy equation and we have a force equation. K we know is newtons per meter. M, or excuse me, x needs to be in meters. Energy is measured in units called joules. Now there is a conversion between joules and calories. I think you used calories last year in chemistry. There is a conversion from uh, joules to calories because energy is energy. We're just looking at it in a different form. So our first two equations that we have is the force equation. Force equals k times x and we have an energy equation. Energy equals one half k x squared. So now we're ready to do worksheet number two, but the scaling on, work, on problem number one didn't come out. So we need you to scale it accordingly. So scale from zero to 250. So each increment would be 50. So 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. And then the X increments go up by 0.05. So 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 
0.25 and then draw a nice straight line sloped upward. Then you're able to answer the rest of the questions for number one. So the graph didn't come out in the printing.